Okay. Welcome, everyone. I am Kara, the Adult Services Librarian at the Oregon Public Library. And tonight we are going to talk about online library resources for genealogy. So we'll be exploring some free online resources as well as some that we subscribe to as the library and require library card access. To get started, uh, a great place to start is our website, and that is OregonPublicLibrary.org. Uh, from our homepage, you can click on Research and Discovery, and this takes you to a list of resources um, that we have. Um, we either license these resources, so we pay for them to subscribe to them, or they're provided by the state um, through BadgerLink. So BadgerLink is a program, um, a Wisconsin program that provides Wisconsin residents with online resources. Um, so some of those are listed in there and uh, some are ones that we pay for. And so it tells you there um, in the description if we pay for it or if it's provided by BadgerLink. Most of the resources that we are going to cover tonight are listed in this main view. But um, to get a listing of more specific resources for genealogy, I am going to go to our genealogy page um, and get rid of all the riffraff, uh, like consumer reports and novelists. They're great resources, um, but they don't help you with genealogy. So here is our genealogy page. And the first resource we have listed is Ancestry. And this is Ancestry Library Edition. Um, it's a little bit different than an individual subscription to Ancestry, um, but this is just a huge, huge database with all kinds of digitized records. There are phone directories, um, census records, all kinds of digitized content, um, as well as indices. Um, you get just a wealth of records, um, draft cards and naturalization records and digitized family histories um, and just a bunch of stuff that is just super helpful. <laughs> um, Ancestry is a resource our library purchases for our card holders. And then next in the list is Heritage Quest Online, uh, which is a resource that is available to all Wisconsin residents through BadgerLink. It is not as thorough as Ancestry and doesn't have as many record types. Um, Ancestry has a larger collection, but it's important to know that the collections were digitized and indexed separately. So that means that they have overlap. Um, so sometimes the scan on one will be better than the other. Um, so for instance, when you're using Ancestry, and um, the scan isn't very good or um, like it's, it's really light or hard to read. Um, and then sometimes after the, the records were indexed, um, you know, a human went through and looked at the digitized record and then tried to say like how the name was spelled and it's hard to read in old timey handwriting. Um, and that means sometimes you can't find a name like you know should exist in that census record. Um, and it might be because it's spelled differently because of that human error portion. Um, but any, in any case, um, you can check Ancestry and then you can check Heritage Quest with the types of records that have overlap and then compare you know, different scans and um, different in indexing for those records. So even though they're different and the same, they, they still can be helpful. So then the next resource we have listed here isn't really an online resource. It links you to our microfilm collection. Um, so for local history, we do have the Oregon Observer on microfilm from 1881 to 2006, as well as the census for Dane County and Dodge County um, for some selected years. Um, our microfilm machine is not currently available to use, uh, but if you'd like us to do some research, we can see if we can do that for you um, while our microfilm um, machine will be available in the future, it just isn't right now. Um, 
So that can be a fun thing to look at. There are, are also some newspaper links that you can use um, to search um, some newspapers, like from the Oregon Observer um, from 2005 to 90 days ago. But that's, we're going to be talking about newspapers next month. So we'll get back to the fun stuff. <laughs> newspapers are fun too. Sorry, didn't mean to imply that. <laughs> So below that, we have a listing of free online resources. Um, I will be using some of these throughout my examples um, in this evening. Um, but right now, I want to call out the Oregon Area Historical Society. If you're working on any local history, please feel free to reach out to them. They are a wonderful organization. They're all volunteers who really care about preserving our local history and are happy to help with research and talk to you about your research and, um, and guide you and advise you on your research. So that is um, a great resource we have locally. Um, also, if you're doing other Wisconsin related research, um, for your family history, Recollection Wisconsin and the Wisconsin Historical Society are also very valuable online resources uh, for, for, for your genealogy. Um, they have wonderful collections. And in um, Recollection Wisconsin, they have photos, maps, books, artifacts, oral histories, and more from dozens of Wisconsin libraries, archives, historical societies, and museums. Um, so they actually collect items from other digitized um, projects from around the state. Um, so it's a really great collaborative work that they're, that they're doing. Um, you can find state and local history resources um, as well as materials from across the country and around the world. So it's, it's a huge collection and um, very, very helpful. And there's also, of course, the Wisconsin Historical Society, which has a huge collection. Um, they, I mean, you name it, they have it. Um, municipal records, photos, newspapers, local histories, family histories, videos, images, maps. Um, they have content that covers early American exploration and settlement and all kinds of historical content. Um, they're, they're, there's a ton on there. Um, some content is only available in person and some content is online. So you can um, you know, search and see what, what's there and what works for you. Um, they, they have a really great, it's a really great resource. Um, it's even just fun just to poke around, even if you don't have a specific family tie to Wisconsin. Um, it, they're great. So that is the overview of the resources we have listed on this page. Um, and now I'm going to get into some of the examples. So for this evening, I'm going to be using examples from my own personal genealogy um, to help you through you know, some of the genealogy stuff. Um, so from my family history, I know, you know, me, my parents, my grandparents, and a little bit information about my great grandparents. So that is where I'm going to start here tonight. Um, I'm going to do a general search for my great grandfather, Emmanuel Hensel. And I'm going to start in Ancestry. So I will click on Ancestry. And then since I am not at the library, um, I will need to put in my library card number. Um, so Ancestry used to be a resource that was only available on site. Um, and since the pandemic, they have allowed home access. And that has continued even as things have opened up a wee bit. Um, I don't know if that is going to be a permanent change, but I hear rumors it might be. So um, to log in, you just type in your library card number and log in. I paused my share 
And now I'm going to share it again. Um, I didn't want to show my library card number in the recording. So just a moment. Hopefully that worked. Maybe it didn't. Okay, let's share the screen again. <laughs> All right. So now we're, you should be seeing my screen again. Um, and here is Ancestry. So you just uh, type in your library card number and um, do hit login and here we are. Um, so you could search for a specific different or specific type of record or in the census records or whatever. Um, but I'm just going to begin searching here. <laughs> Click begin search. And then I'm gonna put in my name here, which is Emmanuel Pencil. And then I do have a estimated birth year um, of 1882. And I will start my search. And um, I have misspelled his name. <laughs> I have misspelled his last name. Um, so this is perfect. Um, we do still have a lot of results, um, over 5,000. Um, and before we really dig in on that, I wanna talk about the filters we have on the left side of the screen. We have these dots and then it goes from broad to exact. So this is the fuzziness of your search. If you know exactly how something should be spelled or an exact date, um, you can make it exact um, and it will search for that exactly. Um, in this case, I have misspelled the name to begin with. <laughs> and so that, that could cause some issues or not cause some issues um, if we, if we made it really broad, it might not. If we made it really exact, then I would be missing records because I misspelled the last name. So I am going to edit my search and fix that spelling. And yes, so th this is more like what I was expecting to see. <laughs> Instead of 5,000, we have 92,000. Um, but actually, this first thing that comes up, this family tree record, um, I'm pretty sure this is him. Um, I know that his wife was Katerina, um, which is who I was named after, um, shortened to Kara, but um, that was what my parents were thinking when um, they named me. And so... Um, there's that. Now, 92,000 records is wild. That is wild. So I'm going to make some of these um, more exact, and I'm going to make the birth date exact, exact, and I'll update the search and do that again. So here we go. This is a lot more meaningful here. 75 results, and we still have this family tree here at the top. So the family tree, I believe, is a crowdsourced feature. Um, that you can do um, if you have the individual account that you pay for. Um, when you have the library edition, you can still create a personal account and save some things, um, but you can't create this entire family tree like this one person did. And so we're, we're gonna look at somebody else's work. And so I'm gonna click on here. And here is the family tree for Emmanuel Hensel. Um, so here at the top is a picture, which um, is cool. Um, he kind of looks like my dad, which that's his, my dad's grandfather. So yeah. Um, anyhow, we'll go back by hitting this back arrow and we'll go back to the, the, the page. It is a little slow, but here is the timeline um, of the family. And so you can click on these different events um, and then it is also linked to these documents. 
So you can see those sorts of things. Um, and as we scroll through in the children, you can see um, this is my great aunt Edna. Um, this is my great aunt Bertha. Um, I was born on her birthday. So um, I, that matches up with some of the family um, knowledge that I have when I click on her, I go to her family tree and then I can see her birthday, May 28th, like mine. Um, so that, that matches up. And then Esther Ruth, this is my grandmother. So that also matches up. So I knew she had many, many, many siblings. Um, didn't quite realize it was that many, but there she is. So this family tree already offers me a lot of family history and a lot of things that were confirmed and then also a lot of new information. And if we look farther down on the timeline, we can see 1907 is when they arrived in the US. Um, so if I click on that, this purple line directs me to this document, which is the New York passenger list. And then I can view that and it gives me this citation um, from a record and it gives me all the information here. So um, it was Emmanuel, although this one was <laughs> transcribed strangely, um, but it says where they were going to and all, you know, all of this great information. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and view this record and then it takes me to this record. Um, and here we can see that it is Ellis Island. So I'm going to be able to verify this to make sure that it's, you know, it through the, if I want to find it separately, I can do that through Ellis Island, which I will show you in just a little bit. Um, but now let's take a look at this record and find Emmanuel Hensel. So this is the actual scan of the Ellis Island um, passenger list. So on all of the all of the toolbars and things are very, very similar in they're they're all the same in ancestry. So on the right hand side here we have a button that will make the display full screen. So it does that. And then this arrow you can toggle between seeing the information about this type of record or hiding that. The tools allow you to download or print or you um, sometimes with scans, they need to be rotated to be viewed correctly. Um, it also helps you invert colors. Sometimes that helps read the scan. Um, and so that's that. And then we can zoom in when we use this zoom in thing. So I'll zoom in pretty far. And so then here he is, Emmanuel, 30. Kat, Katerina, 28, Daniel, Jacob, and Christoph. So here they are. Here's the record of them coming over. Um, so that's, that's really exciting. We get to see that. Um, I am going to zoom back out. And another thing you can do in here is look at the film strip. So at the bottom of the page, there's the film strip. And so you can see the next page in the book if you want. Um, after I did some research, I found out that Emmanuel and his father um, came over together on the same boat on the same day. Um, but it took me a while to figure that out um, because I didn't look through the full, um, the full record for this. I just saw Emmanuel and then I didn't look any further. So you can go through and look and see um, for all the Hensels that are on there. Um, so then to go back to my search, I am hitting this back arrow and I went back too far. So we'll type in Emmanuel again. Emmanuel Hensel spelled correctly, born in 1882. We'll make that exact. So here are our duplicated, um, our duplicated uh, search results here. 
So this was the tree that we just looked at. Next, um, they have um, a naturalization record. So this is when um, Emmanuel became a citizen and that was in 1939. So we could go in here and look at this. This isn't very exciting because it's just a typed card, um, but you know, it gives the address in Naperville. So, I mean, in Illinois, I could go, I could go see where he lived at that time if I wanted to. So we'll just go back again. There we go. And then next, um, let's see. Oh, this one I wanted to look at too. I wanted to show you the draft cards are pretty cool. Um, so I found this one. This is um, Emmanuel's draft card um, for the First World War. And so, you know, it gives kind of the basic information that we knew um, at the time he was living in North Dakota. Um, which is where he originally um, emigrated over to. Um, he was living there and then later moved to Chicago. Um, but when we look at this particular card, we get his actual signature. Down here at the bottom is his signature. So, you know, this is a scanned image, but the image it's scanned off of, my great grandfather held and signed. So like, I don't know that like, is cool and just like gets me excited. Um, and then here it says he's a farmer. So I didn't know that. I didn't know what he did in um, North Dakota, but he was a farmer. Um, so, you know, that gives me a look into his life a little bit, you know, what, what his life was like. Um, so that is kind of a basic of like how to use ancestry. And now I'm going to jump around a little bit. Um, I want to verify that Ellis Island record um, and just, you know, see a little bit more about that. So I'm going to open up a new tab. Oh, no, actually, I'm going to go back to the genealogy page. So I just flipped over to that, that. And then I'm going to go to the Ellis Island online. Um, so the Ellis Island passenger search database is home to 65 million passenger records um, of people arriving into the port of New York from 1820 to 1957. There are other ports of entry, but Ellis Island was a huge one. Um, so you can create a free account, which I have done. Um, to allow you to search. So I'll just click login. Um, and then I'll do a passenger search. Um, so I'll do my Emmanuel pencil and um, the misspelling fairy has come again. Um, and no records were found. So Emmanuel is spelled with an E. So this is when that fuzzy filter would have helped because probably it would have come up. Um, but here we are. So this is Emmanuel and 1907, that, that matches up with what we found. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on passenger record. So this gives me, you know, just the basic info and um, the, the annotation that, you know, it, and this is really interesting. And this got me down another route of research. So he was coming from Romania. And so his nationality is listed as Romania, but it's also Romanian, but it's also listed as German. So this has been a, a mystery that I've been working on, um, but um, we'll come back to that. So passenger record, if you click to the next tab, you have the ship manifest. And so um, here, if you scroll down, you can see the record. And so this is the same thing that we just saw in Ancestry. Um, it's a different scan, looks like a little bit different quality scan, um, but here you can still see all that same, all that same info we found. Um, and then here, there's also information on the ship. So this is a picture of the ship that um, 
that came over, we can see that there were 1200 passengers. Um, and, you know, that can be kind of interesting. Some genealogists really like to see, you know, what boat they came over on and, and things like that. So here's that information. Um, so let's see. Um, so I'm going to go back um, to that ship manifest and look again. Um, so here, here's some more Hensels that came over at the same time. Benjamin, which I believe was Emmanuel's brother. Um, so uh, the brother, the father, and Emmanuel all came over at the same time in 1907. Um, So let me see what my notes are here, what we're going next. All right. Um, so now we've learned some things about Emmanuel and I want to document them. So I wanna show you how I've been using Family Search, um, which is another resource that is listed here. Um, Family Search, a free online database of genealogy resources. It was created by the Church of the Latter-day Saints and um, you can create your free login. Um, this, this resource is entirely free. All of it's free, the whole thing's free. Um, so that one, it doesn't, it doesn't charge for any of the, the services. So I'm gonna go into my family tree and um, look at the tree. So here I am, and here's my people, and then we're going to follow the Hensel line. Um, here we have Emmanuel. Um, and so I could go in here and add information um, about things I just found. So came to the U.S. in 1907, became naturalized in 1939. Um, I can log the information um, where, where he was born, where he died. And then it also allows you to um, attach um, sources. So if I click on the sources tab here, you can see all of the different things that I have found and other people have found, because this can also be like a crowdsourced um, product. Um, so you can, you know, find the gravestone, you know, and attach it. And so this one is, this one is nice um, in this way. It, I mean, it, it is a feature that is similar to the Ancestry one, but it doesn't require a subscription to create these timelines. Um, so now going back to my family tree, let me go back to my tree. And we are going to jump to the other side of my family. And um, do, 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 sorry, I have to navigate there. Um, I could be in the Daughters of the American Revolution. Um, and so I, this is some family history that I've kind of worked on and, and collaborated with my um my family on and we can go back pretty far um so i already talked about how it's how this is crowdsourced okay um so years ago i did research um but it's really hard to physically create these family trees because they're so large and unwieldy. So I, I really appreciate having um, this online family tree. Um, so I did find the line um, that corresponds with my research and I didn't have to enter all of it because some of it had already been done. Um, so I was able to just like copy that over onto this timeline um, and play around with it. The person farthest back is Matthias Farnsworth who was born in 1612. So that's this guy. Um, but that's about all I know. So um, I am going, I can't remember. 
So I prepped the searches so I could show you some cool stuff. And now I can't remember what resource I was using and I didn't write it down. Um, but so he was born in 1612 and died in 1688, but that's all I know. Um, so I think I was using Ancestry again. Um, so I'll pop back into Ancestry and we will do another search. And I'll do a new search for Matthias Farnsworth, birth year 1612, which is just wild that it, I mean, 400 years ago, oh my gosh. <laughs> so I put his birth date in 1612. Um, and the first record that comes up for Matthias Farnsworth, um, who was born in England and died in 1880 or 1689. Um, so that's pretty close to what I had, which was 1688. So that could be the right one. Um, and this is actually an application to the Sons of the American Revolution. Um, so the application date for this was 1913. Um, so in this record, let's take a look at it. Erwin Farnsworth is showing he is the descendant of Joseph Farnsworth. So that's what this application is about. And so then we'll go on to the next page of the application. We use this arrow forward. Um, to, to go on to the next page. And here he, he lists his family tree. So Joseph Farnsworth, um, Jonathan, da, 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 da. We go to six, which is great, 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 great grandson of Matthias Farnsworth, born 1618, died 1689. And his wife and daughter, um, that's, that matches up with the information I have. So that is really helpful. Um, now I have this other line here where I could add additional children and um, more information going back. So um, these, these records are really helpful because other people have already done the work, which is really nice. Um, it also gives me a location, which is Lancashire, England, of where Matthias Farnsworth was born. And then it also gives me another location, which is Groton, Massachusetts. So I can look into those places as well. And these are the types of um, the types of little like crumbs that you follow when, when you're doing your genealogy work. Um, so I'll click this arrow and go back to our search results. Um, you could download or um, print this record if you want to. Oh, and then on the, the next page here, um, there is a note about um, some corrections that needed to be made um, to this family history. So um, the registrar noted that, that a couple of the, the notes were incorrect. Um, but uh, that's, that's nice to know. And again, you can keep, you know, scrolling through and looking at um, other applications and things, or let's hit this arrow and go back to our search results. So this was really nice because I could just view that record, um, but some of these records are not full text. What that means is there is a link to the index, but not an image of the document. Uh, so here, this marriage record um, is just the index. You can tell because it doesn't say view. So if I click on this one, it just gives me the information, but there is no image for this document. Um, you can request these documents from um, you know, from other sources, um, but this is, this is not linked as a digitized source. Um, so,
Um, so, you know, you can scroll through these records and I'm not finding too much else. So I'm going to try and change what I'm looking for. I'll still do a search for Matthias Farnsworth. Um, so I'm going to edit this search. Um, but now let's put in the Lancashire, England um, and see what we get with that and keep the birth date as 16. 12 again. Um, well, let's let's try instead of Lancashire, let's try Eccles, Eccles, Lancashire. Be even more specific. There we go. Search. And let's try, you know, different levels of exactitude. And then um, here, <laughs> someone has already done the work. It looks like there's a family history here. Um, so this is a potential match, you know? So there's like different, this didn't really give us too much more um, information, but it looks like somebody else was doing some research. And so there's, you know, some different things that we can do. Um, and this is where Groton, Massachusetts came up again. We have the find a grave. Um, so we can click on this record um, and you just keep on picking until you, you find, you keep going. And, you know, the website's pretty easy to use. Um, sometimes you get um, pushed into outside of Ancestry, like this one, links to Find a Grave, which is um, a, a different um, resource here. So this one actually took me to the Find a Grave website. You can look at the address bar and see we're now there. Um, and this one gives parents. So it looks like Richard Farnsworth and Elizabeth Farnsworth. Um, so I could then go back and look into adding those into my family tree um, and things like that. So I hope this demonstration has helped you um, see, you know, how to get started and use the resources. Um, do we have any questions? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording.